All right, welcome to Creator Hardware. Today we're talking about building your own OpenSense PFSense router versus buying an appliance. If you don't know what PFSense is or OpenSense is, I'll explain it real quick. Quick little note about OpenSense and PFSense. Their OpenSense is a fork off of PFSense. The best way to describe them is PFSense updates very slowly, so the updates are generally stable, whereas OpenSense updates more often and maybe a little more buggy, but will accept newer hardware faster, etc. It's a router that is also a firewall. Now the first and easiest option is to buy a PFSense box, and that's a router with PFSense built into it. This is not one of those because I'm not taking mine down, <laughs> but this is just a prop. But it's basically you plug it in, you set up PFSense, and you move on with your life. Not that expensive, uh, not the way I would go nowadays. Now a Zima board or Raspberry Pi is gonna be a step up from that, a little more horsepower, a little more, a little more robustness to the tool you're using than an appliance. Not that expensive. You know, the Zima board's what, 180 for the, the baser model, and you still have two ethernet ports, and they're very efficient. And that's kind of the way I would go if I was gonna add a, you know, PF sensor, open sense router to my network. The next step is the Dell hack. And if you don't know that, all you gotta do is, you know, Google Dell PF sense router and you'll find probably 60 videos. And it's simply taking an old Dell workstation, adding a two port NIC, and, you know, turning it into a PF sense router. The problem with those is they're not that efficient. Some of the problems with doing that is some of the NICs can be iffy. You know, this is a Chinese 10 gig NIC, not one gig, but it's just an example. So that can be problematic just from the, the standpoint of getting a, a iffy NIC and not having something new. Cheap might kind of cost you a network reliability. Now, of course, the next option, especially if you've got a rack, would be building a rack mounted PFSense box. This is my Proxmox server. Now, the last option we're gonna talk about is virtualizing your PFSense router, OpenSense router into something like Proxmox. Now, I've never done that. My firewall is well upstream of my server rack, so, you know, it's not gonna be in my rack unless I do some sort of dedicated controlled network that I wanna isolate. But if you virtualize it, from what I've read online, it can be extremely problematic if you have any issues with your virtualized environment. So it can cripple your network. So I would not recommend virtualizing it because it's just one more step that can go bad. You know, one screwed up setting in your Proxmox settings and all of a sudden your entire network's down. So the options are, are freaking limitless, man. I mean, you can go from building a dedicated, uh, you know, you can go from virtualized to dedicated hardware for your PFSense or OpenSense to an appliance to a Raspberry Pi or a Zima board. Very cool project, but you really need to have a firewall and you really shouldn't be paying for it, hero. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching. This is Creator Hardware.